month's market update. I'm here today with KC Lowe from Frontier Advisors, Capital Markets and Asset Allocation Team. Hi there, KC. Hi. Well, certainly in the news as we're sitting here today is the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Step us through that and particularly the repercussions for investors here in Australia. Yes, so that's the big headline right now. So Silicon Valley Bank is a big US bank. They're the 16th largest US bank. Uh, in terms of assets, they have around 200 billion um, in assets, so you know, quite a large bank. And this is the second largest US bank collapse um, in US history. So, uh, considerable event. Yes, significant impacts there. But maybe to start off with, just to give you background, um, the unique features with Silicon Valley Bank is that. Um, most of the deposit is concentrated in uh, startup companies and also venture capital firms. So it's quite a concentrated uh, deposit base, mm -hmm. but also that they invested this money into long-term bonds, which is, you know, it's not atypical of banks to do that. They usually well borrow short in terms of deposit money and then invest in long-term assets like bonds. But unique to Silicon Valley Bank is that they have a very concentrated deposit base in terms of just startup firms and venture capital and they invested heavily into long-term bonds, so very concentrated investment portfolio as well. So the problem arose when interest rates started to increase last year. So the Fed started to increase interest rates, but also other central banks. And as these interest rates increase you know, quite materially, the um, value of Silicon Valley Bank's long-term investments are to fall. Mm. On top of that, as the economies are slow, a lot of these startup companies um, were burning through the cash, so they were withdrawing the deposits as well to run the business too. So then it was a double hit of deposits were shrinking, and also they were losing heavily in terms of their long-term uh, investment portfolio, which forced Silicon Valley Bank to need to raise more capital. This spooked a lot of the depositors, and it started a bank run, which led to the collapse of the bank. Um, so that's all sort of the background on it and the problem with it. But in terms of broader implication, um, there are concerns around contagion risk and systemic risk around um, US banks and the banking system. So far, the regulators have stepped in and it seems like it has provided um, pretty good comfort to the market, but it's something to watch and it's ongoing. But the other implication is on future interest rate expectations. So what the market has taken from this is that as interest rates have increased so much, we're starting to see these strains and stress in the economy. So the banking collapse is one example. So they've revised down the interest rate expectations. So it'll be interesting to see at the Federal Reserve next meeting in late March, how their balance between you know, increasing this uh, interest rate and causing more financial strain and stress in the system versus trying to bring inflation back down to control. Interest rates certainly seem to be the heart, at the heart of a lot of the things that we're talking about uh, these days, KC. And here in Australia, the Reserve Bank have once again lifted the cash rate. That's right. So they've increased the cash rate by another quarter of a percent. It's 3.6% uh, now. The main takeaway, though, is that yes, the Reserve Bank of Australia have said that most likely they'll need to continue to hike interest rates. But the governor, uh, Philip Lowe, had also said that they are probably closer to taking a pause now because they have increased interest rates so much, they want to see how that flows through to the real economy. So in some ways, it, that's a positive in terms of they're closer to taking a pause. Um, that has flowed through to the Australian dollar. So you know, the Australian dollar was trading closer to 72 cents. In you know, January, it's one of the six cents now. Yes. But that's one of the factors driving that. Uh, but in addition to that, um, the Reserve Bank uh, made this decision before the Silicon Valley Bank collapsed in the US. So it'll be interesting to see how the Reserve Bank take on this new information at the next meeting. Um, the market seems to have adjusted the expectations on the back of it. So for Australia's cash rate, um, just two weeks ago, the market was expecting the cash rate to peak at around 4.4%. Yes. Um, today, it's still quite volatile, but right now, the market is expecting the Reserve Bank of Australia to actually start to cut interest rates around the middle of this year. So big changes there. Mm. Lots of moving parts and moving quickly. Thanks for that assessment, Casey. And thanks for watching this month's market update.